This housing complex in Irvine, California is being built for Chinese buyers. Separate walk cooking rooms, no unlucky fours in the addresses, and multiple entrances for multi-generational living. Now that video is actually from many years ago. However, for decades now, foreign investors have been buying up the limited housing supply we have here in the United States. As you all know, we're dealing with a very serious housing crisis. We absolutely need to build more housing. And because of the lack of inventory in terms of single family homes or properties that ordinary American Americans can buy, it's actually leading to more demand in the rental market. That is driving up prices when it comes to rent. It has been a disaster. And so now we're hearing from some Republican lawmakers on a state and local level attempt to ban specifically Chinese nationals from buying up real estate in their states. Now, I'm gonna stop for a second and say I am against targeting one country, which is what we're seeing from these Republican proposals. But in general, I do think that we need regulations banning investment from foreign nationals into United States real estate, especially housing when we are dealing with a housing crisis. If you don't live here, if you're not gonna live in the house, you don't get to buy the house. And by the way, this isn't some crazy right wing idea. They've passed similar laws in places like Canada where their housing market was being negatively impacted by foreign nationals all over the world buying up single family homes. This is something that isn't even on Congress's radar and it's concerning me. And since Republicans have a more targeted approach against Chinese nationals for obvious reasons, right? They wanna fear monger about China and all of that. Democrats are responding the way that they typically respond. Oh, This is racist, this is hateful, we're not having a conversation about it. Okay, but we should have a conversation about whether it makes sense to allow for foreign investment into United States real estate in the middle of a housing crisis. In the middle of a situation where places like Los Angeles have 60,000 people living on the streets. We should have that conversation, but Democrats are not having that conversation, that is an issue. So let's talk about what some of these other states are doing and what Republicans are proposing. At least 11 states are considering some form of new legislation related to foreign ownership of farmland or real estate, according to the National Conference of State Legislators. Now, lawmakers have expressed concern over the security of the nation's food supply and worry that several land purchases were deliberately made near American military bases. I'm going to say, I'm just going to admit that is a little bit concerning, right? So, we do unfortunately have an increasingly adversarial relationship with China. I probably would feel uncomfortable with allowing for a, you know, Chinese national to buy farmland right next to a military base. Now the United States Air Force weighed in on a Chinese company's purchase of a corn mill in North Dakota, not far from a base, declaring it a significant threat. So again, the motivations for Republicans are very different from what my motivations are. My motivation is we need to protect the limited housing supply we have for Americans and not allow foreign nationals who don't live here, don't wanna live in those houses to park their money in our real estate. And by the way, oftentimes when that money is is used to buy US real estate, it's also meant to launder the money um, that they've made, right? So that's also a problem. But anyway, for Republicans, they're concerned about national security, allegedly. Okay. Now, a Chinese company also bought land near an Air Force in Del Rio, Texas. And so that's part of the reason why Texas Governor Greg Abbott, with the help of Republican lawmakers in his state, are pursuing legislation to ban Chinese nationals from purchasing real estate in their state. Now, there are, again, some issues with how the proposals are written, right? So some of the new and proposed laws go beyond targeting Chinese nationals to broadly take aim at ownership by all foreign governments, businesses, and here's where I have an issue, new immigrants. So if you're a new immigrant, you're here in the United States, like the, you're gonna live here. I, I don't think you should be included in this conversation. My issue is with people buying up our limited housing supply just as an investment or as a way to launder their money. 
because that hurts us, US citizens who desperately need the housing. Other laws like the one under consideration in Texas do in fact single out countries seen as particular security threats, including Russia, Iran, and North Korea, in addition to China. Are North Koreans buying up US real estate? Like I like how they gratuitously included North Korea. I don't know, maybe they are, I'm just completely unaware of it. In Texas, Democratic leaders though said that the broad measure now before the legislature appeared to be prompted more by a rising anti-China political environment than any legitimate concern over espionage or foreign ownership of the food supply. Well, look into it and research it and see if there's actually a threat because I think it would be a bad idea to just automatically dismiss what Republicans are worried about because you don't like Republicans, right? So if there's evidence to prove that these are unfounded concerns, then by all means reject what Republican lawmakers are trying to do in the state of Texas or any other state where they have similar proposals. But they should do their due diligence and at least hear them out on that. Now there are some other concerns, right? Such a bill would raise a host of constitutional issues because the measure does not distinguish between targeting people who are already here and those outside the United States. It raises serious due process and equal protection issues and that's according to a law professor over at the University of Texas. And I think that is a legitimate critique. And so in response to an inquiry from the New York Times about that, Texas State Senator, one Texas State Senator said, you know what, good point. We're gonna do better and make sure that we're more specific in how we write this legislation to ensure that there are no constitutional violations by the proposed legislation. Now in California, a bill to rein in foreign ownership of farmland passed both democratically controlled houses last year. The bill sponsor, Senator Melissa Hurtado, a Democrat said it was an effort to stop the purchases while trying to better understand the motivation behind them. But notice how it focuses on farmland. It does not focus on what I think it should focus on, which is housing. Now, the California bill, by the way, did make it through the state legislature, but it was then vetoed by Gavin Newsom. Curious, and I should note that Chinese investors are among the top foreign purchasers of residential real estate along with Canadians. And that's according to the National Association of Realtors. I think in Oklahoma, they might have a better plan in place. In Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Constitution limits land ownership to US citizens. Those laws, unlike the proposal in Texas, do not single out citizens of particular countries. In Canada, a sweeping ban on foreign ownership of residential property went into effect this year, which sounds pretty good. A move that the country's liberal leadership said was aimed at curbing soaring housing prices. Canada gets it, that is what I would like to see implemented here. Again, if you live in a different country and you have no intention of actually living here or living in the house that you have purchased, you don't get to purchase the house. Sorry, we need housing. Now, foreign buyers purchased $59 billion worth of US existing homes from April of 2021 through March of 2022. An 8.5 increase from the previous 12 month period. China and Canada remain first and second in US residential sales dollar volume at 6.1 billion and $5.5 billion respectively, continuing a trend going back to 2013. India, Mexico, and Brazil also top the, or they rounded out the top five. So it's not just China, it's not just Canada, there are other countries involved. I'm not trying to single out any particular country. Again, for me, it's about making sure that we save our housing for people who actually need that housing because they need to live in it, they need shelter. Finally, couple that with the other issue that we're seeing in the housing market, and it's a growing issue. It's the in the institutional investors, the private equity firms that have now started snatching up single family homes in various big cities across the country. Now, they'll argue, no, it's just, I mean, if you look at the percentage of home sales that go to institutional investors, it's a small amount. But if you take a look at places like Atlanta, right? It's really concentrated in certain parts of the country. They consist of most of the home sales. So why don't we take a look at this next video 
to see what kind of impact uh, the investment in real estate is already having. In January, 33% of all homes purchased in the US were bought by investors, often Wall Street backed companies with multi billion dollar funds. The Colliers currently rent in a town near Fishers from one of the nation's biggest house rental companies. Their rent recently raised 8%. Good to see you. Come on in. Four times in recent uh, weeks, they've been outbid by investors with all cash offers. It can be, you know, discouraging when you get overbid by, you know, companies. How do you save when you're spending 2200 a month just to rent? So these companies have you on both ends. Yeah, it's definitely a conundrum. In some Fisher's neighborhoods, investors own more than half of the homes, according to realtor Laura Turner. This is one of the neighborhoods that investors have really targeted. They're coming in, they're buying it at cash, and then they're gonna hold them as rentals. They're gonna hold them as rentals because their next big business move is to become corporate landlords. And with the limited supply of housing for you to be able to purchase, obviously the cost of that becomes more and more unaffordable, astronomical. So you have no choice but to rent. And when institutional investors and private equity firms are the ones who hold the majority of rentals, you're really at their mercy. That needs to be banned too. So we have two major issues, foreign investment in US real estate, institutional investment in US real estate. No conversation in Congress about curbing that whatsoever. And the people who suffer the consequences for that are people like you and me. Yes, we need to build more housing, no question about that. But we also need to deal with some of the lack of regulation that would allow for institutional investors to swoop right in and purchase that new housing because they've got a leg up. (laughs) They, They have the resources to do it. You can't compete with an institutional investor that can make an all cash offer. So if we build the new housing, but we don't deal with the regulations necessary to curb that behavior, who's to say that they're not gonna purchase all the new housing that's built or the majority of new housing that's built? A lot of issues at play here, a lot of things to think about. I know that there's just this ideology of, no, just build more housing, just do it, just do it. No, 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 we, yes, we do need to do that. But there are other issues that we have to make sure that we deal with to make sure that The people who get to take advantage of that new housing are ordinary Americans who need it, not institutional investors and not foreign nationals looking to launder their money. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.